Okay, I could see a few more people joining, but maybe we'll, we'll get started. Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining this uh, second session of the Hospital Rooms Digital Art School. Thanks uh, for everyone who's joining us again, and to all those people who are joining for the first time. I'm Tim, and I'm one of the co-founders of Hospital Rooms. We're used to working in inpatient mental health units, but for obvious reasons, we're not able to, to work in the units at the moment. So we started this digital art school. So lots of artists we've worked with can lead sessions that we'd normally be, be running, but it's open to any mental health units in the country and people at home. And we hope you could get creative with us today. So these sessions are going to run for about another four months, every Thursday at 2 p.m. And today's is with an artist called Sarah Berman, who we've worked with twice before. Before we get started, um, we're, this is a recorded session. So it is being recorded, but all your videos and sound are off. So the only things that will be seen and heard in the recording is Sarah speaking and Natalie and Louis asking questions. But you can join in. So uh, Natalie and Louis will be on, on screen the whole time and they'll be able to answer, en answer any questions you put into the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. So at the bottom of the screen there's a Q&A box and you can type in any questions you want to ask Sarah and throughout the, the next 45 minutes Louis and Natalie are going to read as many of them out. So the work we do is in inpatient mental health units and um, we talked about this before, but we've worked with 14 different units over the last four years. They're very intense projects where we do lots of workshops and we transform the environments um, in these, you know, often quite sort of white units. Sarah worked with us on a project at a mother and baby unit in Exeter called Jasmine Lodge. And she spent just over a week, I think, making this, um, this incredible painting, wall painting for the sitting room and it had books on it and it had jugs and it had all different kinds of things and it completely transformed that area. She then worked on another project with us at Rosewood Ward that's in central London and we hope we'll work with her again sometime soon. Her background is in fashion so she had her own label. It's quite possible you've even worn some of her clothes yourself but now she's a painter, she's an artist, she works in collage, she works with fabric and the workshop she's going to be doing today is a collage workshop and it's a way that she's, she's worked before. She led this amazing workshop with us before and we hope you'll enjoy it today. So um, please ask questions as we go through uh, the session. Natalie and Lee will read them out, but for now, thank you very much, Sarah, and over to you. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I've never done this before, so it's gonna be exciting and fun. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, as Tim said, it's going to be a collage workshop and it's called A Room of One's Own because I think especially during this particular time, lots of us are fantasizing about the perfect room, the perfect space and um, it just seemed like a really fun way to have a bit of creative time this afternoon. So I'm going to first of all take you through some, of, some examples of what you can do because the beauty of this project is it can be as simple or as intense as you want it to be. So I'm going to take you through some examples that I made earlier with the help of many family and friends. Then we have this one and I'm going to just roll through these quite quickly and then I'm going to show you the equipment that we've got and what we can do with it. But these are quite busy and quite fun and we're going to start with looking at the templates that we've got and you'll see that some of them can actually be really super super simple or they can get really elaborate and fun and involved and I think the main thing to remember is there's no right or wrong and that's why I use collage an awful lot because I like the fact that it's a starting point and then you can move once you've made your first decisions the next decisions can kind of come from wherever you want them to come from and there's no right or wrong answer so you guys most of you will have a pack which consists of first of all your room templates now these have been rather brilliantly done by my son Raf, who just turned 12 and is clearly an absolute genius and he has spent weeks putting these together so we've got all these different room sets which are meant to inspire you and give you something really fun to start with but as you can see from the examples they're in no way telling you what to do they're just so that you've got a starting point I personally 
I, know, I need, to know, need to know where I'm starting. And if I know where I'm starting, that one goes that way, then I can jump off from there. And, some, and this was Raph's idea, actually. We've got um, the empty room, for those of us with amazing imaginations. But that's not me, and I'm going to start today with this one, because this is the one that I actually haven't practiced on myself, and I thought that would be really fun to start. So that's going to be my first template. And in addition to the room templates, I had a lot of fun putting together an object template. And to be fair, I've just chosen lots of bits and pieces that I thought would be fun. And they just caught my eye. But everyone's going to, you know, you could even take things from newspapers. When I did this with some friends over the weekend, they actually were happier using their own cuttings and newspapers and bits of text. But this is meant to kind of be, again, a starting point, a place to start and... I found you loads of chairs and plants and things that you might find in the home and posters. But the beauty of this is you can go very, very off-piste. So that is what I put together for you to start with. And other materials are, we've got here some really nice origami paper, just so you can see. I use these for wallpapers, rugs, bits of texture, just nice to add a ready-made pattern. So we've got loads of those, and we've got filter gel paper. And I think the important thing to know about this kind of stuff is that actually it's quite expensive, and you might find it just as useful. This works just as well as colour tracing paper. So we've got some of that. I mean, the good thing about tracing paper is you can cut it. So I mean, you can tear it. I mean, so obviously you can't do that to these gel bits that's a bit difficult you do need scissors for that but sometimes it's actually really nice just to be able to rip something because you get a really nice edge on it i'm just going to show you obviously i'm sure most of you do this all the time you are too lazy to go and get scissors but you do get a lovely soft edge and the lovely thing about the origami paper is that that's perfectly rippable and i have found through doing lots of practice of this that Sometimes the soft edge that you get, that lovely buffered edge, is much more appealing. Can you see that there? Probably not really very well. Um, and then finally, just because it's fun, I've got these glitter papers, which I just can't resist adding a little sparkle to something. I'm a bit of a magpie. And now I'm actually going to give you full disclosure because I have, in the interest of time, pre-cut myself some shapes and some of the trickier bits and I've cut out some of my objects so I've got a nice range of objects to work from all around me but I've put them, I've pre-cut them and put them in little dishes because I didn't want to waste my valuable talking time cutting things up because I know you just all want to hear me talk as much as I possibly can so in order to facilitate that I pre-cut them. Um, I start with choosing my template and then choosing a filter and I start with this because it's just easy and I like to have some rules in place although they're my rules and I can break them and I think that's a really important thing to remember is that this is this is something that you do your own way so these rules are not meant to be in any way adhered to but I'm going to start off by drawing a line here just to delineate and think a little bit about how I want my room to look. These pens, oh, I didn't tell you about pens. I told you about other materials. Pens, which you can see here. These, these are Posca pens. I love them. They're ridiculously expensive. And the reason I've chosen to use these is because they work really well on the photo paper. And I've printed my templates onto photo paper because I like it. And I... I like things that are just a bit shiny and glossy and it makes it fun and they feel substantial, but any paper would do. And if you have normal paper, you don't need Posca pens. And you don't really need Posca pens even if you've got the filter paper because you could use acrylic paint on the filter paper. You could use other type of ink pens that are based that will dry like any kind of paint pen and there are lots of them around. Um, in terms of other materials I haven't run through with you, importantly, acrylic paint. And acrylic paint is brilliant because 
not in, if it's not using a pen form, it can act as a glue. So you can have this to use on the back and glue things using paint, a little known fact that I've learned recently. I've got other glue here, copy decks, because it reminds me of being six, and I like it. And I've also got some tape. And the, I mean, actually, I found this tape, I got it because I got it on Amazon and it was really fun and had loads of colours, but the reality is it's fiddly and a bit annoying. And I tend to spend more time like, rubbing the sides than anything else. But masking tape's fine. And again, acrylic paint works. So I think that is everything, full disclosure, on my table. And now we're going to start, and I'm going to make this lovely room. Now, as I said, there's no such thing as a mistake with doing this. So you just start. And the thing I like about these gels is put them down. And you know what? Just for the sake of it being easy, you know, you can just stick one whole one down like this. You don't have to cut it into bits. You can just stick it, just take this. Let's just go like right here, dob, 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 easy, easy. And of course, copy decks, as anyone who's ever shoved it on the back of their hand knows, will dry completely clear and peel off very easily. Are you putting the glue onto the paper there, Sarah? Can you also... Yeah, I'm sticking the glue, can you see that? But there's the glue blocking the way, can you see? Sorry. Right. Doing this, and then you just... Yeah, just re and the good thing about this is there's no such thing as mistakes. So anything that you do wrong, you go in and you get it wrong, it kind of, or you do something you don't want or love as much as you thought you would, it kind of doesn't matter. Which way around did I do this? See, I'm just going to put that on there. The whole thing I'm just putting down. And now I've got a lovely pink template. And the glue will dry. And even if it doesn't, you won't see it because other things are going to get stuck on. But that is my starting point. I've got a pink paint room. And because I'm going to go a bit crazy today and enjoy having lots of different colours and lots of different things, I'm going to, this that I cut probably one of my experiments earlier. And I think I personally love using things that I've already used. I don't like waste and I also think it's part of the game. So I'll use things that are left over and make them work again. Now with this stuff, you need to look at it and you'll see that one side is shinier than the other. And I prefer the shiny side, so I'm trying to get that side up. So I'm gonna put the glue on the non-shiny side. Although to be honest, my eyesight's absolutely horrific now, so I could be putting it on entirely the wrong bit but it will look lovely anyway. This stuff has got a really disappointing brush. In my mind, this was a much nicer brushing experience than it actually is now. But that goes there. And I have found you need to use quite a lot of glue because it will go transparent and it's really, this stuff, the gel filters, they tend to be a little bit stiff and you need the glue to really like get them down and they fall apart halfway through. And that's a bit annoying, or if not halfway through at a later date, which also is a bit annoying. And I'm going to take all the extra glue away from it, which is also, as we mentioned, the beauty of copy decks. And I'm going to squish it out the sides again, beauty of copy decks. And I have got a little rag here, so that I keep my hands clean. But this is all going to come out, and it's a little slip inside of it, but yeah, I'll stick it back. So now my room is looking a bit like that. Now, my next phase, I have cheekily and naughtily pre-cut myself a rug. It's just to save time. And all, all, I, actually, you can see I've torn it. I just went, I put the square here onto the bit of paper. And then I chose my angles and then I folded it. And it was actually easier to do it that way because I could see what I was doing as I went along. And now that I also will stick down. And this way I'm going to actually put the stickiness, the, the glue on the actual rug because if I went directly onto the bit of paper I wouldn't be able to see where to put it. And I found that doing these bits first is a good idea because then you get an idea of what you can see what the room's going to look like. You get an idea of space. And Space on two dimensions is a funny thing. You kind of can't really imagine it, but I can't really imagine it until I get a bit further down the line. So that was that bit. And then I had a really nice bit here that I thought this would... This is just a bit that I took off the... I just took the square. Where is it? Like this. And just which way out? I'm going to go this way up. And then just folded it like that. 
do that old nail trick. Do it the other way as well. And then gently put a hand like that and then gently pull it away. Now I did this one a bit earlier. And I like I actually really like this colour combo. And I think the maroon in there just gives it a, a really good feeling. So just stick this down here. I could have taped that. I could have used my acrylic paint trick to do it. But that's just there. Should we try the acrylic paint trick over here? Because I've actually got some acrylic paint. I'm going to bring it over and show you how we do that over here. I'm actually going to move a little bit of put this here just in case. I probably should have been doing this all the way through with a nice something nice on the table to stop it ruining it. But here, let's just take this paint, dab that on there. You know the good thing about this, I mean because acrylic is actually the most brilliant paint for things like this. I don't usually use acrylics when I'm painting, I prefer oil, but for things like this it's so versatile. And then it gives me this lovely little rush of colour underneath here. So if I don't fully stick it in the right way, it will still have. But I have sticked it in the right way, stuck it in the right way, but that's fine. So it's going to quickly show you where we're up to. The room is beginning to take shape. And the only thing we haven't used yet is the tape. But I do feel this is a really nice time to stop thinking about doing a little bit of choosing of a nice items. And I suppose the first thing I should look at is a chair. And let me find some nice ones that I've cut out already. So I've cut out this one, which I think is kind of a mix between like a vintage and a posh sort of chair. A bit more mid-century. I've just cut out ones from the set that you guys have got there, so you can see. I've also got this one, and I actually am going to go with the red. It's something, obviously, Quite nice to just hold a few up. It's something very personal. For me, I look at those and I go, well, they just look a bit small, but you could decide to put chairs one on top of the other, on top of the other, and that becomes something that's in your room and how you want it to look. I'm going to go a bit more realist with this, and I could either do that one there, which I think looks kind of cool, but I think it's getting a bit lost, and I'm going to, I think I'm going to go for this one. And just be really bold, and I like that red. So I'm gonna put this back just for the being really, really tidy. And the magic blue brush comes out. And I'm not, I, I love getting copper decks on my hand, so I'm not bothered about wiping the brush down my fingers because I actually really love it. And there we go. Now we have a chair in a room and I'm actually now going to use my pens and think about putting some books on the shelves. Okay, I have to admit for disclosure as per the project you just saw at hospital rooms I love painting books because they're just really satisfying because all you need to do is put a little strip down. Hey this one, can you see here it's got these nice little lines already in there. There, I could colour those in like that put a few like round colours in, make it all nice and bright. I could put different books in here, here. I stack books often like that. And these pens dry really, really quickly. So you don't have to worry too much about waiting for them to be ready for you to go over bits. So you can go over them immediately. Tara, do you mind freezing yeah. when you finish holding that right in front of the screen just so that we can see the, see the details? So can you see that now? That's great. So I'm just colouring in the books and I'm doing that by actually just drawing and doing a line. Let me do it upright. Look at my skills, look. Upright. It's going to be a library, a very, very colourful library. It's also a nice way to think of it as patterning rather than as can you see that? If I just 
Oh, this is a good one. Love this blue. So I'm just, I'm gonna work like that. And the pens really add a whole different dimension to it. For me, anyway, I, lo I love the way they make everything bright and, co and colorful and you can do anything with them. That was a bit lame. Don't use that color. And you could just keep going. Well, I could just keep going for ages, like painting stripes here to make this really fun. But I'm going to now get into another bit that's fun. And we can go back to this in a minute because something that it's important to, I think, just let go of it as well and not think about it too much. And I could get really, really drawn into just doing those books in great detail, which isn't entirely necessary. So I'm going to have a little, I think, a light. And I think definitely, because I can see here, on the back of this, I've got like a little picture or a mirror or something lovely. So I'm going to go for this, mainly because it's got the orange in it and I'm liking the way that's going to go together. And I also think the dark blue pulls it all together really nicely. But you know, there's loads. I could go for Tokyo. We could go to the Lido. We could go to Hawaii. Hawaii looks quite nice. But no, I'm going to, we're going to stick with Travels to Budapest. Um, because my paint is here, I'm actually going to stick that down with the acrylic paint. And again, get this wash of colour going through it. I've done it really roughly, because I actually quite want to see what happens. I'm going to move those pens back a bit so you can see me stick this down there. I used to can't really see it. And then I have another trick, one of my very favourite things to do with this, which I'm going to make a nice frame. And I'm going to cut it because it's easier and faster, but again, this could be torn. I'm just going to hold it against there and measure it out. But it doesn't really matter if it's the wrong, I'm cutting two, because remember two sides of one size, two sides of the other. It doesn't matter if your sizing is off because this is your fantasy room and it can look any way you want it to look. And I might have done a bit thicker, but it doesn't matter. It's going to be nice. Bold, not thick, bold. And how big does that need to be? There. I'm going to guess. A lot of guesswork going on. But that's the beauty of it. I mean, I've spent hours and hours making these. And sometimes I'm sucked in for like three hours. And we're trying to do this one in half an hour, 40 minutes. So you can really just take your time and not, and not be rushing. But, that's... but equally, you know, you might want to do loads of them. In which case, we need to get a move on. Okay. So just simple by cutting strips, I make a nice frame, wipe that glue everywhere. I hope that no one notices it's on my table now. There we go. Nice big frame that's clearly overlapping. The bookcase but in these rooms reality is not necessarily always the best thing we like to be a bit more imaginative big gilt frame probably went thicker but i could take this off as well because the glue doesn't you know you can just take it off and start again but then it's big it's dramatic budapest looks exciting the glue is accumulating on my hands okay i'm going to show you now because i feel mindful that it's going in the wrong direction we're getting somewhere it's interesting because when I look at it on that screen and that screen, it kind of feels different to me. And you guys see all the glitteriness. Okay. So now some more objects. I am going to go for, I love the animals, that's why I put them there because I find them really funny. Um, this bird, let's go for the bird. Bird can go on the frame. So I tend to use, like, that's what I said before about doing something and then reacting to it. I think it's something that comes from painting. You don't, well, I don't really know what I'm painting until I'm painting it, and I've definitely got no idea what it's gonna end up looking like when I start, because I think my job is to react to what the painting is doing. And that's something that, I think that's why collage and painting sit so well together, because it's that thing where you make a move not knowing what your next move will be, but it will definitely be a reaction to the move that you made before. So a re reaction to my frame. We've now got a bird sitting on it very happily. And 
then I'm going to go for, I feel like I want to draw my table out again a bit more because it got a bit covered and there was a table here. So I'm going to, I don't like that. I'm going to go to my trusty black, my trusty black pen. And I'm going to draw my table back in because I feel a little bit like it's kind of disappeared into the filter paper. So I'm going to draw that back in using the lines and making it up a little bit. Now my table's there. And the other thing I feel I lost a bit was my fireplace. So I'm going to draw that back in, like I'm just tracing it. I mean, the reality is it probably needs to be a little bit like that. Let's make it up as we go along a bit. Make this into a fireplace. Sometimes you just realise that you need a bit more depth somewhere, and black is brilliant for that. You just, it makes it all stand out. So that's there using all my skills to make that impressive. Um, and then I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a vase of flowers on the table. So I'm going to cut out some of my vase options. I've picked out these loads, actually I've picked out loads of lime. Yeah, I've got this one. This is a good one because it's big and it's bold and I could very easily go, oh, that's going to look marvellous. So that one. But actually, no, I'm going to go for this one. And then I'm going to do this as a bit of a trick. I'm going to take some flowers. These are my all-time favourite flowers, so we're definitely using these. And I'm going to put there, I'm going to cheat, because I don't like that vase that they're in. And I'm going to put this vase here, covering up a little bit of my ugly black drawing that I just did that wasn't as beautiful as I'd hoped. Stick that on. Oh, I'm mean, actually, no, I've done it wrong. I'm going to stick this on first, the flowers. And put them on together so that I can see that that can go together like that. And then I'll put the flowers on the table. And then suddenly, you'll start seeing, and that starts getting a bit of, you've got the foreground, you've got the plant, you've got the vase, and that makes the whole thing look a bit more exciting suddenly. It really, really helps. So once you start getting your objects on, that makes the world a difference to everything. And it stops looking flat. Um, I am going to... Do. do you know what I'm going to put? I feel like it'd be nice to put something on there here, on this. These shelves are begging for a bit more, so I'm going to stick that on there, and I'm going to use my acrylic again because it is really nice. I keep trying to get a bit of yellow left on the outside, and it's not happening. So somehow I always manage to cover it, but I do think it would make a nice difference if it came through. There, it has worked this time. Look, you see that. Wow. Yeah, it's looking fun, right? A bit more. It's, look, it's beginning to look like a fun room. Um, flowers, animals. Let's look at animals. I've cut out. I actually thought I've cut out the penguin. If anyone who is watching this actually knows me, you're all going to know what I'm going to choose now. Oh, I've cut out two penguins. But it's going to have to be the pug. <laughs> I have a pug. And she's the love of my life. So we're going to, we're going to call this the Wilma Room. And Wilma is always the star accessory to any fabulous room. So she's going on there. And now she is slightly obliterating my flowers. <laughs> that went a bit wrong. So now I'm going to have to cut out more flowers and put them somewhere else in there. But she does have a lovely yellow halo. <laughs> So let's have a look for another bunch of flowers that can liven up. Oh, that's nice. Let's do this. You see, it's very much like you go along, you just roll with it, and it becomes this really fun meditative process. I mean, usually I wouldn't be talking whilst doing it. It sort of takes the meditation aspect out just, just a tiny bit. But it is, I find this so relaxing. I could do this for, I have been doing it for days. But I actually really like it. And I have to say, my, my friends and my family have been helping out making room sets. And they really enjoyed it. And Lulu, my daughter, even came and sat with me last night for a couple of hours and found herself sucked into the world that is collage. Okay, I'm going to speed up a bit because I'm mindful of time. I want to put some wallpaper on the wall. And I'm going to choose... I'm actually going to go this colour because when I did it on the bookcases, it really... No, can you see that? Yeah, look, okay. This really popped out and I love it. 
But also, oh, I don't know, I'm really stuck. I'm going to do this and this, and I'm going to make some more paper. And that's really easily done. I'm like a, a person like a stripe. Oh, and I'm going to go onto the ceiling, but pretend that hasn't happened. But it doesn't matter, because wall, ceiling, who cares? <laughs> I'm just making a little stripe. And I, that's why I love these pens, because they're so rich. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm hoping I haven't, like, blocked the thing. It's so, they're so rich. They're just really gorgeous. And they go on, and in one stroke, they're bright, and they're fun. And now, look at that. The ceiling is merging into the wall so beautifully. This is a slightly Alice in Wonderland room, I feel. Always a big inspiration for me. I'm not sure if it's the colours or this idea that it can, you can just like live in this total fantasy. Okay. Now, I could leave that pink with just the blue, but I'm kind of, my interior designer's hat goes on and I feel I'm going to bring out the yellow for a more restful feeling because... Oh, this one's not got anything in it. More is always more. But that's what you have to go show you what you actually have to do. This is on the spot training for Posca pens. You have to do this. And eventually you'll see the colour begin to seep. That's actually super satisfying. You see this? That it's beginning to seep down. And then a few more little ups and downs. And I'm going to, there, and that looks so cool because look, the filter paper, the gel paper, comes through. So there's this lovely orange and pink coming from behind the yellow and the blue. And I've got this, it's almost like a sort of compositional game where, again, painter's hat goes on, where you get to bend the truth of the stencil and go for what sort of, when, what does it need? And if, how to respond to what you've actually got in front of you. There we go. Okay, I'm quite excited to hold this up now. I think you're all going to be quite impressed. I guess if anyone's got any questions that they'd like to, um, to ask Sara about this process or her work, then pop them in the Q&A and um, we'll have a few. Next. Light. Okay, I love this light. I've used it in basically everything. I mean, I obviously couldn't bear to live with this, but in my head, it's amazing. And also, again, back to this whole thing about composition. I'm looking at this and going, where do I want to put something? And I can just see that it's begging for something just to go there. It's desperate for it. And my more is more aesthetic that we're having today. What are the types of um, flowers that you've got in there? <laughs> we've got blue hydrangeas, <laughs> we've got some sunflowers, and then we've got a, shall we call it a spring posy mix in the corner there. I actually went on to, um, just googled bright flowers, and then found my favourites. So you really can, you know, you don't need me to put this together for you. This is literally as easy as browsing your favourite things and putting together something that catches your eye. And I then also, I cut this out earlier. I've got quite a few of these kind of characters. These are characters I use in my work. I love the Arlecchino and I like things that are slightly, I always love a diamond pattern, things that are slightly kitsch and fun. They really work. Do you know what? Now I'm thinking maybe I don't want to be in Budapest and maybe I actually want her to be in Budapest. But actually I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me put this guy in play. I think he can be, he can be here going along and maybe we can, there's another car. Yeah, I've got another, I've got a few other cars. It could be like a whole thing on the floor. I don't know if it's too much. I want to put two of them in. And then that will also make it easier because then when you're, you're, as it gets towards the end as well, you start seeing things you're not happy with that you definitively want to change. So you start off not knowing anything, becoming, letting the process lead you, well, lead me. And then I get to this stage and I start seeing things that are definitively right and wrong about it, which is interesting because there isn't definitive right and wrong. But when you get to the end of your 
piece of work and start looking at it and seeing what you've made, that's the time where, in my experience, you realise that you want things to be a certain... You want to make certain decisions definitively. In case we've got a bit of a race going on. We've got the... This feels like a movie that I haven't seen. So we're getting here. Do you know what? Shall we have him? <laughs> Are you going to join the race? <laughs> Just for a penguin should be in. And actually, that's not just about Penguin, it's about this space here, for me. I'm a bit bothered by it, so I'm going to put that in there. March the Penguins, he's heading out the door. <laughs> there. And if I'm now looking at this, the bit for me that's bothering me is over here. So, I've actually got this really nice bit of, yeah. again, leftover bit of paper that was over here. I'm just going to stick this down, I'm going to look at that, level it up with that nice line there. This will then fit and I can lift this up because as I said that glue does come off and it's quite cool so I can just do that. Bring that up a little bit over here and then yikes. No it does work. It's definitely going to work. It's definitely going to work. I'm going to stick it down. Do you know what? Should we just do a little bit with, with tape as well? It's not going to go over that now. It's not going to go over the, um, the vase. So I'm going to have to draw that and cut that out. So I can draw a vase like that. Cut this out to accommodate that. It's getting rid of the black line because I don't want that hard black line in there. It didn't work the first time I tried it. So I'm not going to go for it again. But if I, see that makes slightly wonky vars now, but I really don't mind the wonkiness. There we go. So that's the, the beauty of it, is you can just like change things that you're not happy with afterwards. That will go back down there. And now, I think we are nearly, not quite, but nearly finished, is that? This is quite a lot of detail in there, but now, do I want to do this? Do I want to stick her there? Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to be, I'm going to cut her and have a corner of her in it. I'm going to, if I cut her like this, then I can put her just half in the frame. So we're half a Budapest and half with this funny girl. And then we're going to get to the bit that is actually my all-time favourite bit of this whole process. I've cut and torn some circles for you. So I cut them and then I tore them and I like both of them but they do actually kind of come across quite differently because you have this really rough edge and you have this hard edge. But I'm going to stick them on here because I did it the other day and now it's my favourite thing to do and I'm not sure it's because I like the way it looks or because I like the act of freedom of just sticking down quite indiscriminately brightly coloured glittery circles. There's something about having spent all this time making something, making decisions and following some sort of fairly random but decision-making process nonetheless and then something quite freeing about going, yeah, and I'm going to stick glittery coloured circles all over that. And I'm even going to put one on Wilma's stomach. Look at that. No, feels wrong, feels so wrong. Sorry, Wilma. <laughs> and there we have it. A really fun room. I'm actually have a, quite on purpose. I have left some space over here, so this is looking really properly busy and full on. Stick that down again. But I have, I'm very aware, left room to fill in my book space a bit more because that felt like it was something that potentially could be a lot of fun and I haven't maybe maximised it. So I'm going to carol draw in my stripes in here. And if anyone's got any questions or anything they want to ask, feel free. I've also got some space here. So yeah, it's just 
it's just a free and fun thing where you just make it up as you go along, losing the temper as a starting point. And I could also choose to colour any of these bits in that are left and feel weird. I tend to use the brighter colours for that. I mean, sorry, the softer, the more muted colours because it kind of calms them down. And get rid of bits of blue as well. I, mean, I suppose I could also pattern the chair if I wanted to do that, all kinds of things. If I wanted to go, okay, you know what, this chair could be a bit more interesting. I could take another colour and I could add a stripe to the chair. So you could really keep going just for hours and hours, adding bits and pieces in. And I think that's... There we go. And Sarah, I'll just say that in about an hour, uh, there's going to be an email sent out to everyone who's joined in this workshop um, that will have the Zoom recording. It'll also have a survey, and you'll get a survey sent at the end, but it'll also have a Dropbox link. So we'd love to see the artworks you've made. Um, so if you, oh, yeah. Yeah, so please do take pictures of the artworks you've made and put them in the Dropbox so that we can share them and we can show them to Sarah as well. Be really great. Um, Sara, thank you so much for that session. It was fantastic. This is my finished. There we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it looks fabulous. It's fun. I want to live in here for a bit. I could definitely spend some time in this room. I think it's a shame that your actual house doesn't look like that. Yeah, my family <laughs> say that all the time. <laughs> As you know, the kids would love it. It does look, it's a bit, at least the pug's there. I was, I was going to bring her in <laughs> in the session. You can share the share. That's your lockdown project from now on. Sara, thank you so much. Thank and you thank you to everyone who's come to the workshop. Um, like I said, there's going to be a survey that will pop up at the, when we when we leave the Zoom, but also in an hour, you'll get the Zoom link, uh, uh, sorry, a link to the recording. So if there's anyone um, that you know or any service users that, might, that weren't able to join in today but want to watch um, Sarah's workshop, they could do it then. In the next week, we're also going to release a 10-minute version of Sarah's workshop, so a really concise version. And we already have last week, so Mark's 10-minute, uh, sort of much more professionally recorded version is already online, so you can find that on our website. Um, and next week, we've got Giles Deacon leading a workshop. So he's a fashion designer. Um, you might know him because he designed Pippa Middleton's wedding dress, um, but he's also, he's got his own um, fashion label, and he's going to do this amazing pattern workshop, and you're going to get all the details sent through to you for that. So we'd love it if you could join us for that workshop too. Um, I think that's it. And thank you so much to everyone who joined in and to Sarah again, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks for joining. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Bye.